Thank you. Mr. Summers and all of you gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Uh, Mr. Summers, thank you uh, for your statements and you highlighted in your testimony the fact that mining is something most people don't experience firsthand, yet they benefit from its results every day. I agree with that fact in that statement and that is particularly true of the folks who live right here in Washington, D.C. Wyoming, however, is a mining state, and from being the home of the world's largest trona deposits to its abundant coal reserves, uranium mining, and countless other minerals, mining is a way of life in our state and a major driver of our economy. When Joe Biden wages war on American mining alongside radical environmental groups, our state suffers and America suffers. My question to you is, how has the messaging of this administration's towards this, towards the mining and coal industry impacted our state's abilities to generate revenue, as well as our ability as a country to lower electricity costs for the consumers. Uh, thank you for that, Congresswoman. I, I, I think that the, the messaging is, is unhelpful and it's also a little confusing, frankly. I mean, when you talk about some of the, the energy, new energy technologies and the energy transition goals of the Biden administration, but then you're withdrawing huge tracts of federal land from development, as Congressman Stauber talked about, as we've seen in Alaska and elsewhere, and in Utah. You know, and we've had two, we have two very large national monuments that have locked up substantial mineral resources. And in terms of being able to develop, you know, and, and bring the investment that's needed to uh, develop our mineral resources, you know, which are, are very expensive and complicated to develop, if you've got messaging from the federal administration that says, you know, on the surface, yes, we want to do all this stuff, Stuff, but then as you get into to federal permitting, as you get into land withdrawals and all the other things that have been talked about, it sends a very mis mixed message. And so I do think that it hinders our ability to attract the investment that we need. And I think also on the coal side, you know, we're a very coal heavy state as well. As I mentioned, 62% of our electricity comes from coal. And, you know, to have those coal communities constantly hearing that, you know, we're, we're shutting down your plants, we're shutting down your mines, uh, makes it difficult to also get these uh, younger generations of workers to want to come in and, and work in these very high paying uh, and highly skilled jobs. Thank you. Over 40% of the coal that is produced in this country comes from my state, from the state of Wyoming. So we play an essential role in keeping electricity costs low for Americans. I think it's rather unfortunate that this administration doesn't see the direction the entire world is going with, world, with coal production. Coal is the second largest source for US electricity. Germany and Asian nations have seen a large increase in their reliance on coal power. I know and firmly believe that coal is the energy of the future. And as radical environmentalists try to force their countries into an electrified transition, the world is not ready it for in terms of minerals mined and processed, lack of infrastructure and more. Coal, however, is there time and time again to keep the lights on. Mr. Summers, again, can you explain why the U.S. continues to rely so heavily on coal and why other nations are seeing an increase in their reliance on coal for power? Absolutely. Um, again, part of this is, you know, you, you use the, the resources that you have available in your state because there's benefits beyond just providing that uh, inexpensive and reliable dispatchable power. It also has benefits in terms of creating jobs, creating royalties uh, and monies for federal or for local economies. And I think that part of the reason that the world is moving in that direction of using more coal is the simple fact that, you know, we have an energy crunch generally. You can see natural gas prices that have risen substantially. You've seen disruptions in supply. Uh, the, the renewables have not uh, produced in the manner that they've been, that we were promised that they would produce. And so you need that that reliable, dispatchable, inexpensive power, and people will, will get it. I mean, we're shipping coal to Europe. You know, we're shipping coal to other parts of the world that we haven't shipped to for decades, frankly, because there's so much demand out there because of the general shortage of energy that we have. And coal's an important part of making sure that people don't freeze to death, frankly. Coal is affordable, it's accessible, it's clean, and it's the energy of the future. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. 
As I mentioned, certain countries have had to rely more on coal or nuclear energy and power to make up for shortages that are a product of their attempt to force an electrified transition before the world is ready. Our nation pre prepared for the electrified future they envision and whether these Biden administration policies run the same risks here in the United States. Yes, I mean, as, as has been mentioned, there's massive mineral demand that's required for new energy technologies and for energy transition. And frankly, the federal policies around developing those minerals are, are not adequate to, to make sure that we meet that demand. You know, we, we do produce a lot of coal, but we also are a major copper producer. We're one of only two states that produces lithium. We produce magnesium, and we produce a lot of things that you need for all of these energy technologies. But, you know, the, the federal policies are not, again, encouraging investment, and in some cases are discouraging the development of these, these resources in, a, in an adequate way. Well, and thank you, and thank you, gentlemen, for making our lives better. I yield back.